Thank you very much. This is on. You can all hear me okay? No. Good. Yeah. No. Now? Now better? No. It's on on my side. Audio? Can we get this to everybody? It's okay now? Okay, good. Cool. Um, great to be back yeah, here with the engineers Henrik Plötz. I'm Carsten. And yeah, we're back with more RFID research. I know some of you thought we would run out of weak proprietary RFID <laughs> systems to break, but there's at least this one more um, that deserves being disclosed. We are especially happy about, about this one. Um, we encountered more layers of obfuscation than we knew would fit into a small RFID tag, and we found attack vectors we had no idea people could possibly build into systems. And especially we are breaking a, um, an access patch here that's used in a lot of high security areas, nuclear power plants, <laughs> airports, this type of application. So this is mar marketed as, as high security, and um, we hope not beyond today. Um, the card we're talking about is the Legic Prime card, product out of Switzerland that's popular mostly in Europe, um, but has been seen elsewhere too. Um, just like MyFair Classic, which we discussed two years ago, this is a, um, a, a low, low read range RFID tag, 13 megahertz. Um, it's these little cards you swipe in front of a door and then the door opens. Only those doors you are, you're supposed to have access to should open and it's supposed to be very secure as in not clonable um, and, and um, keeping users out of where, where they shouldn't go. Um, there's two types of this tag. We, we are only discussing one of them. Um, I'll discuss them in detail on the next couple of slides. So as I said, it's used for access control into high security areas. Um, it's also used by, by a lot of companies as, as employee badges to, to get into the company. And they're also uh, often used as, as micropayment in the dining hall, for instance. So this is a multi-purpose card um, that's found in, in plenty of places since it has been around for such a long time and um, never has had um, any security problems, apparently. Um, the first type of, of Legic card is the Legic Prime, um, the older of the two, and the one we're, we're focusing on in this talk. Um, it is the much more popular one uh, up until now, even though the, um, it's, it's newer, um, version is, is actively being marketed, but there's a lot of installed um, systems. Um, it has been completely proprietary early on. Um, it was invented way before any RFID standards existed. So this was somewhat of a, of a pioneering uh, engineering um, step, um, something towards the, the access card we have today. Um, which was back then really um, great technology, I'm sure, but uh, should have been phased out by now. Um, despite being completely proprietary, they tried submitting it as an ISO standard when ISO came around to standardize RFIDs, but got rejected um, since nobody really can, can use this other than Legic. Um, what's nice about them doing this is that we have access to these documents now. And, these very documents are the only information publicly known about the, the system. So the, basically, we know from public documents how single bits are transmitted, nothing beyond that. Um, its newer browser that we won't discuss today uh, has a lot of similarities, similarities with, with the Legic Prime, um, but it is based on standardized um, ISO 14443, for instance, which which um, your credit cards or MIFA Classic in a different variant use too. Um, so this was invented after RFID got standardized. It also, more importantly, uses standard cryptography, which back when Prime was built was not really affordable. Um, some more research is needed to find whether this, this is really secure though. Um, as I said, no information is, is, is publicly known until until today about, about the prime other than the, the, the bit level encoding. Um, and we had to, to reverse engineer um, pretty much everything um, on, on the higher levels. Um, 
that is one of the distinguishing factors of, of Legic. Um, not just that nothing is known in the open, it's also very hard to get access to, to, to any type of card or, or reading equipment. Um, so there's a, there's just, there's a, a whole industry around protecting um, hackers' access to, to this card, uh, to these readers. Um, we do have a reader though, so they, they are, um, it is possible to, to find them somewhere if you, if you ask long enough. Um, the, the second distinguishing factor that we have never seen in any other such system um, is what we think Legic's attempt to, to mimic um, physical key security, where there's usually master keys um, for, for whole buildings, there's, there's certificates that say you are allowed to create keys for this installation, um, there's master keys above those or master certificates that say you are a key distributor, you can order whole bunches of keys and so forth. So Le Legic um, coming, well the, the, the parent company coming from from this industry and um, try to mimic this, which is very popular among customers apparently, and they call it the master token system control. Turns out that this is not just a, the most distinguishing factor, it might also be the, the most vulnerable point of this, um, this whole system, having a hierarchy with, with increasing access rights. Um, it is marketed though as a, as a security feature, actively so, um, and found, found in both um, the Prime and the Advent. Um, this hierarchy is pretty much the equivalent of to, to say a, a Windows domain, um, a hierarchical Windows domain with, with access control list for, for every file or, or in this case door you can access and even for the, uh, for the different segments on the card. Um, so if this were to work it would be a very elegant solution. Um, turns out that at least in the prime um, there's, there's no secret keys governing this unlike in a Windows domain. Um, we do find that, that this, this lack of um, protection allows us to, to access pretty much um, anything on the cards, which, which we'll, we'll, we'll discuss um, in a little bit. Um, more importantly though, um, we find vulnerabilities in the hierarchy itself. The hierarchy looking, uh, being, being defined as the higher cards having shorter serial numbers and um, every card sharing the, the prefix with, with its parent card. So the shorter serial number is, the higher you are in the hierarchy, and you can, you're supposed to only create cards with your serial number plus something added to it um, as a master token. Um, the way Legic rolled this out is to give one, one byte cards to, to their closest licensees, and then they give out two byte cards to their, their uh, system integrators or distributors, and then the customers get increasingly longer cards and, and can even increase the lengths themselves if they have a hierarchy in, inside the organization. Now, it would be good to, to be on top of this hierarchy. Um, we'll talk about that later. In, inside of the hierarchy, on each of these levels, um, there, there's a couple of different cards other than the user access cards that, that everybody has as, say, the employee um, badge. There's those cards that allow you to create the next level of hierarchy, the gum cards. There's those cards that allow you to create sub-tokens within your hierarchy to, to, to seed new users into the system. The, the EM cards, and there's those cards that allow you to, um, to activate a reader to become part of your system, the SAM cards. All of these cards um, are the same physical card though and only differ in a few bits that are set or not set. Even a user card is the same card. So in theory, um, you can from a blank Legic card create any of these or a user card, which is usually supposed to. This is a blank card and uh, I've created my own gun from one of these. So, so yeah, we, we, have, we, we have created um, plenty of, of each of these. Um, so we can do in this hierarchy um, pretty much anything. There's other types, um, at least in, in, the, in some of the documentation that, that we haven't um, played with that either differ in, in some timers um, or more interestingly, 